In this video, I teach you how to be a Ford Raptor poser. Let's do it. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another super exciting video filmed in my driveway once again in the beautiful state of Florida. Nice and sunny today. So once again, you guessed it, Ram Rebel. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. What we're going to be doing today is showing you how I transformed my Ram Rebel into the super badass Ford Raptor and what I mean by that are these little grill lights up here. I'm gonna show you how I wired them up to my truck. I've gotten a lot of requests to do this video, so I'm finally getting around to do it today. Um, I'm just gonna be showing you how I did it. There's multiple ways to do this, um, but this is just the way I did it. So, first things first, let's take a look at the lights you're gonna need to do this. All right, guys, so here we have the lights you're gonna need to do this just these little three or however many you want to do little amber LEDs I purchased these on eBay I think it was around eight dollars for all of them so let's just go ahead and open them up here so you can get a better look at them so you can see here you got the nice wire with your positive and negative terminal and then just right here a little amber light then you can see back here it comes with the nut you're going to be using that to secure it onto the grill and then there you go relatively cheap to do so these are the lights you're going to need um i've already have mine wired up so honestly these are just extra i do need to replace one of them so that's why i do have these here you know they're relatively cheap if they burn out it's not really a big deal so first things first we're going to need to remove the grill from the truck so we can go ahead and start seating these lights into the little honeycomb shaped right here. So, come up here, pop the hood. If you don't know how to remove the grill, you gotta remove these little trim pieces first. There, right there, right there, right there. Once you do that, there is gonna be a bolt right here, right here. And then another one down here and down here. Those are 10 millimeter bolts. You remove those bolts and then this grill should just click out of place. Um, it's a little bit harder for me because I have these lights right here. So I'm just gonna put you down, do that, and then we'll proceed to the next step. Okay, so now you can see that the grill is fully removed from the truck. Let's go have a look at it on the table. So, you can see up here, the little LEDs, they're nice and seated in there inside the grill. So let's go ahead, flip this over, I can show you the back side of it. Right here, there you can see. The three LEDs all wired up together, daisy chain connection, and then what I went ahead and did, and what I recommend you guys do, because if you don't, and you constantly take off this grill or need to take it off, you're gonna have to trim the wires. Just go ahead and throw in a quick disconnect. I did it here, and I also did it for the 20 inch light bar that I have connected right here. So you can see, it's just a little, um, female and male connector quick disconnect and i'll go ahead and i'll show you on the truck as well you can see that i have it connected right here so it's quick and easy you just unplug that you can go ahead throw your grill on and off and it makes it easier you're not having to try and flip the grill up here with a bunch of wires all connected to it you know go ahead do a little bit extra work it'll save you time in the long run so like I said earlier, mine are already connected 
this really isn't a, um, a tutorial on how to do this. I'm just kind of showing you how I did it. But you can see here, I used a washer to go ahead and once you stick, uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and I'll show you with just one I have here. I went ahead, I fed the light through one of these holes and then I used the washer to just kind of, you know, hold a little bit more tension and then use the supply nut to go ahead and crank that down on it. This little, push that will quickly be through. Like that. It just kind of sits in there. Kind of like that. So then you go ahead and take that washer just so it clamps it down a little bit more inside there and then you just use the nut that comes with it to tighten it down. What I went ahead and did as well is I had some of this rubber um, kind of like silicone seal that I just kind of, you know, kind of sprayed on there just to kind and give it a little bit of extra, you know, durability on there. I didn't want them moving around too much. So if you have that, I would recommend doing it, but you know, it's not necessary. It's just a little bit of a extra measure there to hold it in. Okay, now that I showed you how you could actually secure and wire up all these LEDs together, we're gonna go over to the a little bit of a tricky part. Now, you wanna take how I did this with a grain of salt. Like I said earlier, there's multiple ways to do this. There's probably easier ways to do this, but this was the way I did it. You could go ahead and get a add a fuse. You know, the, I can, I'll throw a picture of uh, what I'm talking about. It's basically like a little uh, fuse that will click in to one of your existing fuse positions and then you just put the fuse back on top of it and you can run power through that way. Or you can do what I did and you can pop up, pop this little part of the fuse box off and you can tap it directly into one of the lines here. So again, do this at your own risk. This is how I've done it. So you can see here, this is my quick disconnect. We got positive and negative on here, so you can see that right there. I fed this wire up through here. You can see it running through here, and instead of going directly into the fuse box, I go into it underneath here. So then, you can see right there, this cable. This is one of the cables that runs directly to the ignition. And you can see right there with that little bit of tape I spliced directly into that cable so whenever I turn my car on I hit the remote start or I just hit it and it starts up the lights are automatically on all the all the time there I, I didn't wire up a switch that I can turn them on turn them off remotely I just wanted them on all the time so that's the way I did it I tapped directly into an ignition, an ignition source. Again, you could go ahead and find one of those sources up here and tap into that directly. You know, cool. That's not what I did, so I can't really show you that. But that's what I did right there. So that right there, you can see that ignition cable right there. That is the positive connection there. And then it's hard to show, show but you can kind of see right there that the negative is running back down, comes out through this side, and I got the negative connected right here to the battery source, so that's grounded out on the negative. And that's how I have it wired. Again, take it with a grain of salt. You don't have to do it this way. It's just the way I did it. I had someone else helping me do this. It's the way they suggested to do it. I tried it with the um, little Adafuse, it wasn't really working for me. I don't really know if it was drawing enough current or not. I don't really know. It just wasn't working. But this way seemed to be working fine. I've had them installed this way for over two years. No issues besides one of the bulbs kind of just going out. But again, that's more than likely just because it's a $2 bulb, not because it's wired incorrectly. So that's more or less how you do, how you do it. Again, take it with a grain of salt. You don't have to follow it that way. You say whatever you want about it. That's just the way I did it. Again, I would highly recommend adding these little quick disconnects. Just makes working on everything a lot easier. 
little bit of bonus information I have for you here. I have gotten a lot of questions about how I mounted this 20 inch light bar behind the grill. A lot of people tend to do it in front of the grill. I think it looks a hell of a lot cleaner behind the grill. So you can see here, these are the supplied mounts, little brackets that you get with this light bar. Again, this was a cheap light bar. I think it was 40 bucks on eBay. It came with the switch, wiring, everything. So I just used the supplied brackets that it came with and I drilled, you can see here on the back of the grill, it has this kind of little lip area. I just drilled right into that and mounted it up there. You know, two washers, clamping it down, nut and bolt hardware, it's not going anywhere. Nice and sturdy, look at that. Again, this has been on there about two years, no issues. But again, throw a quick disconnect on there, makes it really simple. You don't have a bunch of cables everywhere when you want to remove the grill, makes it nice, quick, simple, easy to do. So again, that's a little bit of a uh, bonus right there. If you're looking to mount any type of light bar behind your grill, you want to make it nice and clean and stealth, cheap, there you go, that's how you do it. So that's really all there is to cover on this one, guys. Just a quick little uh, walkthrough of how I uh, wired these grill lights up. So again, go about this at your own risk. Do it however you want to do it. Take notes from this. If you think you have a better way of doing it, I'm always down to hear it. Comment down below. I'll also throw a little link down below to where I purchased these lights from if you want to order the same ones. So yeah guys, go ahead, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna go ahead, throw this grill back onto the truck, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.